Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome back to Celebrating Act 2. Today, John Combe and I have the extreme pleasure, as always, to speak with John Mariani, the virtual gourmet. Hi, John Mariani. Oh, gracious. Good morning. <laughs> extreme pleasure. It is extreme. Hey, John, uh, we all know that you write the uh, virtual gourmet newsletter. Uh, which is a combination of travel and food, restaurant reviews, things like that. Uh, wonderful newsletter. I love love it every week. I look forward to it. How do you but get- I've noticed oh, I've noticed that we haven't uh, you haven't been back to Italy in a while. Now you we talked to you about Dublin. Tell me about Italy. This is a, you're a landsman. This is a paisan, mm-hmm. and you haven't been to Italy. Well, I haven't been to Italy for two years, uh, no, but and, and I miss it terribly, um, not just because it's my homeland of my forebears, but because uh, it's just, there's not a single inch of Italy that isn't quite beautiful. Food's pretty darn good. Wine's pretty darn good. <laughs> People are very nice. Uh, it has its faults, but anyway, so I do intend to go to Italy this fall and try to catch up with what's new and what's old because one of the wonderful things about Italy is that you can always depend upon it to be 95% the way it was when you were there last time. Of course things wow. change in Italy all the time, but the Italians don't change. A restaurant which I haven't been to in 20 years, if I recommend it and say have the pasta, pasta al forno, I can guarantee it's going to cost exactly the same. Place is going to look exactly the same. Probably get the same waiter. Um, <laughs> when you ask a concierge in in, uh, in Italy, I want to go to a new restaurant, a hip and happening new restaurant. They say, oh, Osteria Mariani, fantastico. You say, really? when did that open? Oh, five, seven years ago. You know, it's uh, that's Italy for you. <laughs> <laughs> so now um, Italians, of course, we I somewhere in, I don't know, it's a movie or something, something about uh, twirling spaghetti on a fork or a spoon and do, do the, in Rome, Roma, uh, do they eat uh, differently than they do, let's say, in in northern Italy or southern Italy? Is it, what's different about Rome? Well, uh, Rome is the you know all roads lead to Rome, uh, and insofar as that is true, it has always been a much more cosmopolitan, international city. So, if you want to eat Roman food, there's ample opportunity. If you want to eat Tuscan food, you're going to find Tuscan restaurants there, too. You want to eat Sicilian food, there's Sicilian restaurants there, too. So um, you can't say that of uh, even the big cities in other parts of, uh, of, of Italy. I mean, if you're going to go to Puglia or you're going to go to Abruzzo, that's the food they're going to serve. Nobody goes to Abruzzo or Sicily to eat Tuscan food. <clears throat> in Rome, you can you can eat Japanese food, you can eat Chinese food if you're crazy enough to want it um uh, florentine steaks so in in so far as the variety of food you can eat everything do they eat differently from the other well in terms of the ingredients certainly um there are ingredients that the romans get that have to be shipped in and remember that the tomato and the potato both came from the americas uh, in the 18th century uh, or a little earlier and that there was no tomato in any place except south of Rome until that century. But there's lots of uh, tomato sauces um, in Rome at this point. The Romans eat with a lot of gusto. Um, <clears throat> they are not, I would guess, they're gourmands rather than the gourmets. They really don't care if their uh, if their food <clears throat> is is different from the next restaurant over as long as it's true to form and they all have their favorites as a result so that if you have a typical roman dish like uh, pasta alla matriciana um, it's going to taste pretty close to the amatriciana at a place next door to the one that is you're eating it okay now we got rid of that frog in your throat let's continue with uh Roman food, Roman with gusto. Roman with gusto. Well, they eat with gusto. Their food can be uh, on the heavy side. A carbonara is a dish which is made with uh, bacon, uh, their guanciale, and with uh, eggs, 
raw eggs, which is cooked in the heat of the pasta itself, and pecorino cheese. As I said, amatriciana is a sauce that comes from amatrice, and that's with tomato and onions. And then there, I mean, there are the abacchio is the best abacchio is lamb, uh, spring lamb, which has fed supposedly on the mint on the hills of Rome. Uh, so there are a lot of uh, Roman dishes, certainly, and certainly Roman cooking. And the, the Italians will eat this every single day because there's such a wide variety. It's not that they're having the same four pastas uh, uh, once a week or anything like that. Um, Rome, Rome, which is in the province of Lazio, Latium, does not have very good wine. And even today, there are a few young winemakers who are doing better wines, but uh, they're not known for their wine. Um, Having said that, you know, to eat as the Romans do, first of all, yes, they do not use a spoon, a tablespoon, uh, and a fork for their pasta. That's a, I don't know why, where it came from, frankly. Um, a little bit in the South, you might find it, but that's really an Italian American thing. Secondly, and wise guy, pizza lovers in America go all aghast if they see anybody eating a pizza with a knife and fork. Fact is, that's how Italians eat pizza. Now, they may fold it up into what they call a libretto, a little book, you know, as we do into a, into a wedge. They may, but most of them don't. And that's the you eat a pizza with a, a knife and fork. So get over it. Um, <laughs> they tend to take long lunches because um, it, it's not so much true that there's a siesta anymore. Nobody goes home in the traffic in Rome. Nobody goes home for lunch anymore unless you <laughs> live above uh, your, your tailor shop. Um, in the old days, that was true. So from one to three o'clock or so, you were, you were off. Um, a lot of businesses still close down, and especially in the south. I mean, you can go to Naples and nothing will be open from one to three o'clock. But in Rome, it's a much more cosmopolitan city. But you will find many businesses, even some banks and, and clothing stores and so forth, are closed because that's when they do have their lunch and they enjoy their lunch and they take a leisurely time at it. They do not grab and go. You know, they don't they don't uh, get a sandwich. I mean, they have panini, but a panini is something, you know, a little sandwich, an Italian sandwich <clears throat> that they may eat in the late afternoon or as a snack. Um, the Romans start off with uh, a pastry, either a, a well, spogliadel uh, or a kind of croissant uh, or brioche in the morning. They don't eat cereal, maybe they serve the kids. And they have uh, a cappuccino, which is with the steamed milk. It is considered a cardinal sin to drink cappuccino after noontime. Um, they consider that a morning drink and it's too heavy with the milk and sits and so forth. They do not, unlike unlike every Starbucks in America, have 16 different types of Italian coffee. Now they, they drink espresso or they drink uh, um, they drink a cappuccino. Uh, they might have something uh, on a rare occasion, maybe at night, and they'll drink espresso through the rest of the day. Um, even they have uh, decaffeinated espresso at this point. Um, but the, it is a coffee culture. They have great, great cafes. Uh, one of the best in Italy is uh, in Rome. Um, one of the most famous is uh, in, in Rome also, the Cafe Greco, where Lord Byron and Goethe, back in the 19th century, <clears throat> were visiting and, and eating and drinking. It's still there. It looks just the way it was. It's just steps away from the st Spanish steps. And that's that's still there. But uh, all over town, people have their fa their favorite um, coffee cafes. Um, Rome does not make coffee. Uh, Italy does not make coffee. Coffee beans come from Ethiopia and around the what's called the coffee belt around the world. But they are processed in Italy so that everybody probably has heard of Ili Cafe and Lavazza and Danesi <clears throat> and a few others. And the Sicilians will argue they have the very, very best coffee, and the Neapolitans will. The Romans don't generally argue that, but as I said, you get great coffee all over Rome. And the little gelato. Now, that, that's their idea of a snack in the afternoon, or a slice of pizza, or something like that would be a slice, before going home to dinner, which because they've generally had a somewhat heavy lunch, which would include a pasta dish, not an enormous, we're not talking about 
six ounces like you get into in, in America for a pasta dish or a main course. They'll have like a three ounces of that. Maybe they'll have a little piece of fish or something, a squirt of lemon and an espresso, and they'll go back to work. <clears throat> but it's a substantial meal so that at night, unless they're going out with friends too, a restaurant, uh, Romans will have something very simple. It could be simple as uh, just soup um, uh, or that is prepared at home um, with a crust of bread and so forth. So they, they don't eat lavishly uh, at night. Although, again, being a cosmopolitan city, Romans, especially the young Romans, love to go out. And they do not dine as late as Brazilians and Greeks, which is 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, midnight. That's when they go out to dinner. Uh, Romans will go out because they don't get home until 8 o'clock. So they're not eating before 8 o'clock or, or 9 o'clock. So th those are some of the things that you should be aware of. It doesn't mean that you as an American, if you're starving at 7, you're not going to get a, a meal at a trattoria. Um, but if you want to do things as the Romans do, put a little time Take a little siesta around five o'clock. Don't wake up until six and then go out a little later in the, later in the evening. All right. So I, I shouldn't be uh, out trying to find the best early bird special when I'm in Rome. No, the early bird special does not uh, exist. And, and I won't be looking for Denny's. So, no, although, you know, the, the thing that, that uh, fired started the so-called slow food movement, which led to Italy, those big... Um, grocery stores, big food stores, was an outrage when they put a McDonald's <clears throat> right smack next to the Spanish steps in Rome. This is going back 25 wow. years. And uh, they did say it had to look a certain way. There's no golden arches on it because of marble facade. Uh, but it became very, very popular because it was, it was a curiosity among Italians and uh, all the Americans went there. But they were Romans were abhorred by that, and a man came up with a slow food movement saying, "Take your time. Food is to be enjoyed. It's not something to be wolfed down, and it's certainly not fast food." So that's uh, see, I don't look for. I mean, fast food in Italy is, is a slice of pizza, and it's all over the place. It's a great pizza. You go in there and you have a sip of wine or, or a ginger ale or something, and um, who wouldn't rather eat a great slice of pizza over a panini and rather than a McDonald's, it's a horrible thought. Yeah. Horrible. I, I, I so you thing. answered, John, so you answered the, the key questions I had were folded or knife and fork for pizza. So you clearly addressed that. And um, uh, if you use a spoon with your spaghetti, you're going to look American. Uh, but then on the other side, since you didn't mention togas and holding food in your hand and tossing it around, I guess that's no longer in vogue. No, I mean, Italians don't eat with their fingers a lot. Um, they use a knife and fork for, for everything. And uh, they also don't drink a lot outside of wine. Um, oh, that's another thing that when in a restaurant or a trattoria in Rome, you can safely order the so-called house wine, vino della casa, which used to be in the old days, awful stuff, just plunk. Now uh, everybody has a good source for a good Chianti or something like that, uh, or a good white wine. So you can feel safe that you don't have to spend, and wine is cheap. I mean, you can get a good bottle of wine in Rome for 20, 20 euros, 20 bucks. Uh, but you don't have to. You can have a carafe or a half carafe and be, be, uh, be um, proud. The, 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 the patron of the place is proud to serve it. He's not going to serve you the plunk that they used to have in the old days. Well, I, I have to tell you, I am. Uh, if I go abroad, and uh, I've been doing a little bit of traveling around the United States uh, since COVID, but if I go abroad, and I really would like to do that, um, I think Italy might be my first stop. You know, Italy disappoints no one. But with this caveat, personal caveat, uh, just before COVID hit, it was overwhelmed by tourists. I mean, just impossible to get into the museums. I'm talking about hours of waiting time, you know. Mm -hmm. um, that obviously dissipated during COVID, but it is coming back, and uh, the Italians are very happy that it's uh, So it's probably now a very good time to know. 
The summer is a lousy time to go. August is a terrible time to go because that's Feno Agosto and all the Italians beep, take off. And uh, they're not even there. Um, so you're left with a city full of tourists. But um, June, July, May, June, July, that's the high season when you don't want to go there. As of September, October, November, that's a really nice time to go to Rome, especially since Rome Rome gets has a winter, but it never gets bone-chillingly cold. So if in November you're going to, you know, with a top coat, you're going to be fine. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is great. Uh, eat as the Romans do and uh, eat often, apparently. <laughs> John, thank you so much. My pleasure. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.